Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your host, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. But before we jump into our amazing guest, I want to remind you of the big event coming November 9th wellness uh, event that I'm putting on. It's going to be locally here in Charlotte. Go to my IG and pick it up, um, sign up. I want to see you there. It is called Burnout to Bliss, a wellness transformation experience. So saying that to say, I want to introduce my dear guest who is phenomenal. Dr. Lisa Folden, how you doing, boo? I am so good. Thank you for having me. Listen, I, the honor is all mine. She is so amazing. She is all about that positive anti anti anti. I can't even talk. Anti diet, <laughs> health and body coach. She owns healthy. Bits, like PHI to yes. <laughs> physical therapy and wellness consultants here in Charlotte. So let's talk about it. Let's yeah. talk about it. Um, Love it. How did you start with your company? Oh, wow. So I actually celebrated 10 years in business this year. So it's been a journey. Thank you. Yeah, business is hard. Um, so it's been a blessing. But I, I've been a physical therapist for 16 years. I came out of school in 2007. And I was just doing all the things. I was a contract therapist. So I worked everywhere. Anywhere a physical therapist can work. I promise you I've worked there in people's homes and hospitals <laughs> in school settings, um, outpatient clinics. I did a I did a long term acute care hospital which is kind of end of life stuff nursing homes I've done it all and I love those experiences and opportunities to connect with people I, I love people I'm a people person and also to learn to learn more about different conditions and so I started my practice in 2013 after having my second child because I knew I wanted more flexibility and freedom in my right. lifestyle um you know when you work for a company it's totally fine because being in business for yourself is not for everyone but it's when you true. work for a company someone else is telling you you know your hours and what you need to do and setting your pay and capping you off and i just knew i didn't want that to be my long term so i started my business very part time in the beginning um so i would work two days a week or one day a week in my practice and then do contract work for other companies and then in 2017 uh, i was quote, sort of forced into full time because the business that I had been doing a lot of contract hours for, they ended up closing. And mm -hmm. so I was kind of like, ah, so I was kind of thrown out to the wolves. But I was like, you know what, this is an opportunity to see if I can, you know, sink or swim. And I was able to swim. And I'm yeah. proud because my, you know, company lived through a, a global pandemic, right? I was trying to homeschool kids and upstairs in my bedroom. I'm on Zoom trying to see patients virtually. It was crazy. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, it was insane. But that all of that kind of caused me to pivot my business to the niche that I'm in now. And so it's been it's been such a blessing to see the journey. Uh, but it was very hard in the start. I like to tell people I didn't get paid for six months in the beginning because I was trying to do my medical billing alone. Don't do that. I thought my doctorate degree meant I could figure out medical billing. Uh uh. Nope. I had to find someone <laughs> who went to school for that and she was able to, you know, work with me and get me paid. So lots of lessons learned, but but that's how it all started, you know, to where we are today. Which is really good. I love, I love, love. Listen, first of all, I met you through known. Yeah, the no women. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I was one of the I was featured in the magazine. Volume four. Check it out. Yes, she was <laughs> looking great. Mm -hmm. And it was such an honor to be with such amazing women, including you. Like thank you. You you are 
goals in so many ways. And what I love about what you do, because we, we do about the same thing, which everybody do. It's just the fact of how we um, go at it in a different way. Yeah. What I admire about yours is body image coach mm -hmm. um, is that it's not um, it's a body exception, exception, you yes. accept who you are. Yes, absolutely. And I I love, love that because we do that because I call it loving yourself to help. Yeah. Because if you can't love yourself, that little brain, she listening. Mm -hmm. All the time. And it's a big thing. So let's talk about that. Let's yeah. talk about body image and what it takes to really make that switch make that switch yeah well first of all it's hard to make the switch because of the messages we get day in and day out right if you are into social media and you follow traditional fitness pages and platforms what are you going to see you're going to see images of people uh, before and after. You're going to see images of people, you know, working out really hard. You're going to see images of people saying, don't eat this, eat that. And there's a lot of restriction. There's a mm -hmm. lot of ideas around like if you're healthy and disciplined and focused you will look like this and so we we gather these images and we start to feel like our bodies are not good enough as they are and everything i'm all about self-improvement i think it's great to work at being better in whatever area of your life but i think our world gets really wrapped up in this idea that that you start to feel like you're never enough you're never you're never smart enough you got to get more degrees you're never thin enough you got to lose more weight you're never strong enough. like there's it's always more, more, more. And then I don't think people are like present and living in the moment and accepting. And when we're talking about bodies, and I know some of my views on dieting and anti -di you know, diet culture and things, they are off putting for people who are very into diets in that world. And I used to live in that world. I was a fitness instructor. I had a weight loss program. I was very much like before and after photo. That was my thing. But I've, I've learned some things since then. And I've also had to understand some things about my body and the clients' bodies that I work with that this idea that changing your body, that fitness and health and wellness is about changing your body. It's not sustainable for most people. And in the long run, people lose their willingness to do things that take your good care of themselves, like exercising and eating well, because they're not seeing changes in their body. And what I try to help people understand is that, you know, when you're embarking upon a new health and wellness journey, your body might not change a whole lot, but how you feel will change, how strong you are will change, your endurance will change, your mood will change. You get all these mental health benefits from moving consistently and eating really good food, but it's not always about the size and shape of your body. So I do a lot of work with people to help them accept and appreciate the bodies that they exist in right now and, and come to make peace with their genetic blueprints and really just live a fabulous life. Like you don't have to be skinny or thin to live a really good, happy life. <laughs> so that's a big, big part of what my work is outside of, you know, the physical therapy piece. So I get what you're saying because I am totally with you. I, I think this is so important to put <laughs> put out the, this message of everybody has to be thin. Everybody has to look this way. And I, my healthy looks different from your healthy. Absolutely. Everybody's healthy looks different. Not everybody is supposed to be a size zero. Exactly. And what's important about that, like you said, a lot of people get upset and they think that I am that person. But if you guys don't know my story, mm -hmm. I literally was a a hundred and 17 pounds heavier, right? Wow. So I've lost over 115 pounds and I've maintained for 16 years. So mine was not because, because you couldn't tell me I, I wasn't healthy then, mm -hmm. but I was taking um, high blood pressure medicine and all mm -hmm. these other things. Mine I knew was because I was stressed to death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always something else, right? It's right. Not, it's not about just the eating part. Mm -hmm. So if you notice on my stuff, I never talk about weight. Yeah. I could care less what your numbers are. Mm -hmm. And so I love how you, that's your upfront. Everybody just assumes that about me. Everybody mm -hmm. assumes that I'm going to talk about your numbers and what it is. And I don't, because yeah. I, don't, I don't care <laughs> about that number. 
but I do care about you. And exactly. I think you had the, a great point that I wanted to go back and talk to you more about is society and what we look at on the um, TV and see on social media yeah. is really disheartening to see um, that is still a standard of beauty. What yeah. do you what do you think about that? Oh, I hate these standards of beauty because they, you know, they they marginalize people so much, people who are already marginalized. And it's like it's isolating and it feels like, like I said, like you're never enough. You're never good enough. You're never quite there. You know, my personal journey, I'm a I'm a short woman, pretty curvy, um, but I was always kind of a petite, tiny little girl, 120 pounds. But because of what I saw on the magazines and on televisions, I still felt like something I had, you know, I had hips and a butt and boobs and I just felt like it was too much. And so I spent, I mean, I'm talking teenage years, age 14 and up dieting, literally trying to get smaller and try to make my body look differently because it didn't fit this stereotypical <laughs> idea of what someone who was fit or healthy looked like. And I, I mean, I continued that literally until my mid thirties. It wasn't until then that I like the light bulb went off and I woke up and realized I've never not been healthy. I've never not been okay. I've never not been active, but all of this yo-yo dieting, you know, honestly, what actually resulted from it is gaining more weight Absolutely. And, and, and leaning me into disordered eating behaviors because diets, that's all they encourage. They encourage cheat meals, which is just the binge. They encourage calorie restriction, which is just starvation. You know, Come they on, encourage, girl. you know, exercise to burn calories, which is another form of like binge eating disorder. So we're not actually being healthy or helping ourselves. We're just participating in what mainstream diet culture is saying is healthy. And we're not even addressing the mindset and the issues regarding our body image and the comments that other people make that, you know, steer us in the wrong direction. So I've been there. I've done it. I've had tons of clients who have as well. And so it's it's beautiful to be on the other side of that. It's still challenging because we still live in this world, right? I still see the same images you see when you're talking about health. But I have been very mindful to curate a social media feed, at least, that really speaks to my thought process on health and wellness, health at every size, recognizing that, like you said, your healthy looks different from mine. And also, being very mindful not to get into this state of like ableism and healthism, this idea that because I'm working on my health and I'm able-bodied that I'm somehow better than someone who might not be in a place to work on their physical health right now because maybe they got other stuff going on that's pressing, right? You know, if you think about someone who is in, in you know, a dire situation, maybe homelessness, or they're trying to figure out where their next meal is coming from, I don't care that they're not going to the gym because that, that is not a priority right now. You know what I they mean? They live in their gym, girl. They walking around. They walking all. around, that part. But just understand yeah. it, that people go through different things in life and, and not everybody is going to be the pillar of health at every point in their lives. And there's nothing wrong with that that doesn't make them a bad person. And also recognizing everybody has differing ab abilities. There are people born with conditions that they won't be able to do things a certain way and there's nothing wrong with them this is just you know their lands and so just trying to be what I try to do in my practice and in my my philosophy for life is just to be more inclusive and open and welcoming and not believing that beauty looks one way health looks one way success looks one way it looks different for all of us and we can embrace that without shaming people you know to do better or be better and I used to shame people I will not lie Elizabeth I was that girl put Come down on, that God, candy really. bar get a salad like I was that girl so I've had to apologize accept my own apology i've apologized to people directly and my my lens is shifted now to more compassion and kindness when i'm trying to help people find whatever their healthy is so you know that's that's been a big thing but those beauty standards they don't do anything but encourage us to be unhealthy so i'm not a fan <laughs> No, and, and I love that. Mine is all about stopping the yo-yo. Stop it. Because yeah. we are doing way more damage to our body mm -hmm. than we know. That Absolutely. up, down, up, down is messing with our heart. It is Big time. Messing. Oh, my gosh. You have no idea what happens internally mm -hmm. when you go up, down, up, down, up, down. It's right craziness so my whole thing is stop the yo-yo and being and my my tagline right uh being healthy is not a fad it's not no it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. and i love how you talk about acceptance and how it is important to really 
and truly look at what the person is going through. Yeah. But as a society, we focus um, so much on just the what we see in the mirror. Right. But there's so many things going on down beneath the surface. Yeah. And that's exactly where we have to start. Mm -hmm, right. For sure. It's like I tell people all the time, I heard it from someone, I cannot remember who it was, but this is just your meat suit. Okay. Like this is just it. This is just the the, the outfit we're on we have on to like function on the earth. But really, we're far more than that. You know, we are composed of a spirit, a mind, a soul. Like we our essence is so much more important than the way our bodies look. Our bodies are really the least interesting things about us. There's so much depth to us, so much more to us. Like if we can tap into that, especially as women, if as women, <laughs> the power yes. that we possess, if we could channel that energy to important things like social justice and, and making the world a better place, instead of spending our energy trying to change the way we look, it's like, and here's the thing. I just like to say this. I believe in body autonomy. I don't believe that I, I have a doctor degree, but I'm not the expert on you or your body. And so if you think you need to diet or do this or do that to make it, by all means, do what you think is best for you. I trust that your intuition will lead you to where it needs to be. But my personal philosophy and when people work with me, I just really like people to turn inward and recognize that focusing on the physical, the superficial, the aesthetic, in most cases, I will say 99.99999% of them, is not going to lead you to anything healthy or good. Because you might look like you healthy, you might look like you doing it and getting all Come the compliments, on. but tore up inside. Girl. Mental health in the trash. Girl. And that's no way to live. It's literally no way to live. So, like, what, yeah. what was that I was talking about the other day? They was talking about she always looked so mean. I forget <laughs> who it was. Beckham or something. I said, because she's hungry. Get a girl a biscuit. Probably hungry. Yeah, you're right. You're probably hungry. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'll be mad too if I can't eat. I'm not about restriction. I'm not yeah. about this. And it's so funny because, um, and, and it's crazy because people always think of me as that person that's going to say you can't do this it can't right and when they come to my program they go oh my god <laughs> that's so nice well because we're used to restriction I, yeah we think restriction is the way we've been taught that it's about discipline and willpower and withholding things from yourself and there's roots in that you know from the patriarchy from i mean even religious sources like there's a lot of this uh, denial of self and desires and wishes to be healthier, to be better. And again, I understand you get to decide what's best for you, but there is something very freeing and liberating about letting go of like society's expectations and standards and turning inward and deciding what you need and what's best for you, mm -hmm. as opposed to like somebody giving you this book of rules that you got to follow and check off every day. It's like it, that, that life is stressful. And I lived it for years. I was a rule follower, card carrying member. Okay. But now it's like, I decide when I want to eat. I tap into my body signals. I decide what tastes good and what doesn't. You know, if it's a vegetable I hate, I'm not forcing myself to eat it to say I'm healthy. There's other vegetables in the world, right? Correct. <laughs> you Correct. know, um, you know, I'm doing things out of love and self care for myself as opposed to obligation and punishment. And Ooh. so many, so many people see fitness and health and wellness as like to be punished. Like punished. I force myself through a workout I hate. I force myself to eat food I hate. And it's like, that's depressing. <laughs> that, and right. And you can no, usually thanks. tell the person that's like that, that yeah. have been forced to do it. Because me, I love it. It's mm -hmm. my medicine. I love to work out. Right. I am not working out for my body. It won't change anymore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. My body right. is what it is. And I found when I was going through the whole weight loss journey for myself, for being healthy, it was it was all in my, I had to go through so much therapy. Absolutely. I had to do so much work. And that mm -hmm. is why I know it's not about that. I was just stressed to the hell. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just so not about the body like we it think was it is. It was not about the body. Yeah. Not at all. Not about the body. And that's exactly what 
we, I, I love that we have the same message. Mm -hmm. We say the same thing, but people listen to you way <laughs> more than they listen to me because they just assume something with me. People they, do, people make assumptions and it's, be, you know, sometimes it is the gift and the curse of, of the bodies that we're in. You know, when you have a very fit looking body and you go to a gym and you do traditional fitness, people make assumptions like, oh, she's probably very strict. She probably doesn't. And, and that's what they associate with health that you health. know yes. naturally my message has been you know I've, I've relaxed you know how I show up in in the workout space is very different than it used to be I used to be on there you know going really hard but I found what actually feels good to me and what works for me and, and it's just a more gentle yeah it's just a more gentle relaxed practice um I work out at home and it's like 20 minutes and it's you know very basic things and then I just include activity throughout my day but also you know my social media presence is about being the rebel so that's <laughs> That's but why but no, I love that. And let's talk about that. How can we connect with you on social media? Oh, yeah. So I live on Instagram. That's my happy place. So you can follow me at Healthy Fit. Fit is spelled P-H-I-T. And um, I, yeah, I do a lot of uh, talks and, and posts and reels and a lot of connecting there. But that's my favorite place. You can also go to my website, which is healthyfit.com and connect with me um, there as well. But yeah. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you for people who are listening now, mm -hmm. can you give them like any tips on how to uh, really turn inward? Like you say, how you mm -hmm. make that choice because it's very difficult. It is. Yeah. It is a very difficult thing. But if you can give them something that they can do and mm -hmm. start doing today to kind of shift. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the process of turning inward, it's, it is challenging. And I do sometimes recommend for most people you work with someone because you, sometimes you just need that guidance and support. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's a process. But really, you have to silence the noise outside of you. So you have to start by letting go. So for some of my clients, that means like shutting down social media or unfollowing a bunch of stuff, <laughs> like and letting go. Um, it's, it's, it's unlearning and then re-educating. So learning new things. For me, it was the Health at Every Size book by Dr. Bacon that sort of shifted my perspective on what health looked like. And then it was the Intuitive Eating book by uh, Evelyn Tribley and Elise Rush that made me think like, oh my gosh, this, this is why dieting hasn't worked and doesn't make sense, you know? So getting the knowledge and the resources you need, shutting off the outside world, and then just really tuning into your intuition. And it's a, it requires some embodiment. So many of us live outside of our bodies all day we just go through the motions what's next next meeting okay do this workout do that and then we never stop and check in with ourselves and say self how same way you check in with your partner or your child how are you are you okay how are you feeling how did that feel i do that in my workouts with clients i'm like we'll do one exercise and i'll be like okay stop how did that feel did it hurt did something feel off did that emotionally activate or trigger you in some way like we have to get back in connection with ourselves and build that that mind body connection because we separate it like we said we act like our brain is over here and our body we, is over there <laughs> we, don't, we don't trust ourselves i keep telling everybody you are creative resourceful yes, and yes. whole within yourself we Already. just don't mm -hmm. yeah we just don't trust ourselves anymore because like you said, i love i love your silence silence it honey silence it shut it down yes you shut have to down. because you're right we don't trust ourselves because the world around us teaches us that we can't you know, the diet culture is notorious for that. Don't buy this. You can't have it in the house because you're going to eat it all. Don't do this. So we we learn to like not listen. We don't listen to our hunger cues. We don't listen to our fullness cues well, because we let some diet tell us what to eat, how much to eat and when to eat it. And it's like, <laughs> so we, we stop checking into our own intuition with our eating, with our movement, with our lives, really. And so rebuilding that connection to self, spending time in quiet, meditating, praying, whatever that is. I have a routine of like meditation, prayer, and stress. That's what I was going to ask you. What do you do what, for your self-care? Yeah, so most mornings, sometimes the mornings get away from me, but most mornings I'm up about 10, 15 minutes before my kids. I turn on meditation music. I use like that 432 
too hurts to kind of like pull me back. And I do a lot of prayer and then stretching. And I'm saying affirmations while I'm stretching my body. And then I end with like about a five to seven minute silent meditation where I'm just trying to get the downloads. Like, what is God trying to tell me? What do I need to know? How do I need to prepare? I've already spoken what I expect. And now I'm like, okay, now, now what's my feedback? And just doing that one, it makes me less snappy in the morning with these kids. I'm trying to get to right. Them. <laughs> right. uh, but two, it just sets me up for being more in alignment and in tune with myself. When I'm stretching, I'm getting this feedback like, oh, this is really tight. Like what happened? Oh, yesterday I did X, Y, and Z. Oh, that makes sense. Maybe I need to hold this stretch longer. But because I'm in tune with myself, I know what my body needs when it needs it. And I know, you know, in the past, if I like, oh, I used to work out consistently every morning and I've kind of been playing with that routine a little bit because again I get real stuck in that rigid rigidity and that narrow thinking so I've been kind of playing with that but there was a time if I didn't do my morning workout I would feel like oh like you suck like it's gonna be a bad day and I would manifest negativity from my day because I was shaming myself for not doing something I should have done now I offer myself compassion and kindness and say I haven't worked out in the morning the last few days I wonder why <gasps> I have been really tired. My sleep isn't as good as it needs to be. I tell people all the time, I would rather you sleep than work out. Because if you're not sleeping, <laughs> you're not getting the restoration that your body needs. Your cells aren't able to repair. So it's just a beautiful thing to be able to check in with yourself and offer yourself compassion and kindness instead of instead of shame and guilt, you know, for not doing something or not doing enough or whatever and, it is. And shame is horrible because shame horrible. is what you see yourself as. Not absolutely. Right? Like I am nothing. You know, guilt is like, oh, maybe I should have invited mm -hmm. her to the party. Right. right. That's the guilt. Like, oh, <laughs> but shame is I am a loser. You Yeah, you take on that identity. You take on that identity. And yeah. there's nothing worse than feeling shame for something that is not even yours. Like Forget yeah. about it. Right. Hit the reset button. Hit the reset button and keep it pushing. Thank you. You know, and I just appreciate you so much, Dr. Lisa, for, for coming on and talking to us and, you know, giving us these tips because this is something that is so important in mm -hmm. our society. Um, and I wish it was just now, but it has always been. It's always been. Yeah. Yeah. Our voices <laughs> are getting louder now, which is good. It, it's right. helping, but it's, this has been an ongoing, we're talking centuries of this stuff. So. Centuries yeah. of this stuff. So I am so, so honored. And before we wrap it up, is it any words of wisdom that you would like to drop on the ladies for today? Yeah, one of my favorite things to tell people is um, you are more than a body. You are so much more than a body. Like the depths of you when you pass, you know, this this life and this earth, your headstone's not going to read. She worked out seven days a week and kept a tight tummy because nobody that values you actually cares because it's not even that important. <laughs> you are more than a body. <laughs> Drop mic, drop mic, drop mic right there. Uh, that's not going to be a year two, though. I might request it, though. Can you put on that? <laughs> I might not I do that. <laughs> I love oh, that. my gosh. Thank you so much. You are absolutely phenomenal. And, um, you know, guys, go make sure you connect with her. She's awesome sauce in everything that she <laughs> does um again how do they get you on social media yeah follow me at healthy fit it's a uh, p-h-i-t for fit all right you guys you know where to go mm -hmm. and until next week i want you to live fit i hope you enjoyed this episode of miss fit one lifestyles listen when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled, overwhelmed, and overstressed life. And you're ready to live the fullest, richest, and healthiest life by gaining more confidence, more energy, and more clarity. Living in your best self, you know what to do, right? Go ahead, go to my website, misfit1.com. Sign up for our online courses, Creating Healthy Habit, so that you too can live fit. 
focus, move with intention, and transform your life.